how often have you had AI break your code through a long coding session? Too often, I guess. Well, version control is your friend here. In this video today, I'm going to show you my full dev workflow of how I leverage both AI and version control to maximize the efficiency of my output. Let's dive in. AI is making us code so much faster that breakages are inevitable. I'm sure many of you who have worked with larger code bases know that the more complex a code base, the more likely it is for AI to make those mistakes. Having the ability to track, make, and revert changes becomes so much more powerful than ever before. Version control is an absolute must in this AI day and age. Git was originally created to make it easy for people to track and validate changes, as well as preventing overrides and loss of functional code. So here's a typical Git history for a new repository. And you have your initial commit, some new features are implemented, some docs that get added, some further features, some fixes, and some chores for bumping dependency versions, and so on and so forth. So the importance of having this Git log is that one, you know exactly what changes has happened, and then two, makes it easy for you to go back to say, oh, something was a bad change, and then making it super easy to revert. The great thing about version control is that it naturally forces you to think about breaking down your work into smaller, more logical chunks, be it a feature fix or some other type of work. By doing so, you always keep your code base in a working state. This principle actually works quite great with AI codegen because the smaller the chunk of work, the more likely it is for AI to get the work correct, the easier it is for you to validate the fact that AI has done the correct work. Before I go into any big feature implementation, the first thing I do is ask AI to actually break down the piece of work into smaller, more logical chunks. I give it a prompt to do the breakdown of the feature work. So here is working on a mini app that I created over the weekend, creating a personal page for users to manage their socials, see the data they submitted and manage their preferences and usernames. Definitely not something that you can easily generate in one go, especially to have it functional. I always also include the code base context so that it can figure out what has already been implemented and to leverage existing code when needed. Once you run that prompt, it will figure out all of the file context and then break the work down. You can see that it broke things down into database schema updates, page updates, and a whole bunch of other tasks that I can just use and copy and paste into Composer for further implementation. The other big benefits for doing this breakdown, other than making commits much more logical, is that the smaller, the more concise the prompt that you give AI, the more likely it is to get the work right. You can see the history of how I've implemented a whole bunch of features just using Composer by leveraging this micro changes workflow. And for every single one of the changes, you can see it only modified around between two to five files all with reasonably sized changes here. Most of the prompts, you can see on the side, it only took one or two prompts to get things correct. Here, I just asked it to implement a really small feature, say mentioning the code base context to show the GitHub username next to the sign up button. It did the implementation, figured out the context, changed the file. And if we go to the Git view, either you can click on version control or press command shift G to bring the panel up. Now you'll see the accepted changes listed here, which is I have a simply a single file. And then to create the commit, we can go to chat and uh, we don't need any of that context. We reference the diff of the working state and say create commit message. And you can see it figures out the changes it has made and then gives you a very nice simple commit message. See, here? it's listed as a feature and then even outlined all of the other changes it's made so that we can copy, list it here, stage this file, and then commit. That's it. And you're probably wondering how I managed to get such consistent commit messages here. This is due to the cursor rules I've updated. I've created a whole section in the cursor rules file with Git usage examples, outlining how I wanted to create the commit message, the prefixes, how it should determine the content, how it should outline and format the rest of the message. It's all in here. And the best thing is cursor rules is also committed in Git so that as the code base evolves, the cursor rules file will also evolve. And then I'll have all of the context together in the code base and always with me. 
if I'm sharing this with other team members, they'll also be able to use this quite easily and maintaining the consistency without having to deal with the prompting themselves. Now you're probably wondering, what else should I also keep in the old code base other than the code itself? In my repositories, I normally keep a separate prompts folder to keep all of my frequently used context there. Here, I've added a simple one for, you know, like leveraging data access layer design principle in Next.js and with a whole bunch of uh, existing data there. The reason to keep the prompts directly as MD files in your code base is that you can use this prompt directly inside the cursor chat, as well as the composer interface by mentioning the file. And just like the cursor rules I just showed you, having this committed can make sure that it can evolve together with your code base as your context grows. And the reason I wouldn't put all of the context always in the cursor rules file is that the longer the cursor rules files get, the more likely it is for AI to miss the occasional rules. So whenever you have very specific rules you wanted to follow, you'd want to break up those big rule chunks directly into separate MD files so that you can commit them into the code base and leverage them whenever needed. You can do this in GitHub Copilot or any other AI chat tools that allows you to mention files. So this workflow applies everywhere. I'll show you the Git history that I've ended up with. And if we expand the window, you can see uh, just over, this is just the work I've done over the past day or so. There's a, a ton of, you know, like feature implementations, fixes, uh, separate chores or fixing lint errors, and a whole bunch of other things. Even just being able to visualize all of your past changes and history is a hugely beneficial feature by leveraging this version control focused workflow. I'm sure some of you are also wondering, can I do this workflow and reap the benefits without having to deal with version control? I really hate Git. Um, you can get some of the features without doing so, but I generally found it to be a le lot less reliable by leveraging those AD IDE built-in features to do those checkpoints. One of the examples is inside the Composer, every time you implement a new feature, Let's just make a small change here. Let's say, make the user username pretty. Every single time you create a new chat together with cursor, it saves the current state of the repository, allowing you to easily revert back to that state. So let's say we didn't like the change it did. We can click checkout to revert back to that previous change. And then it automatically positions us back into that prompt to continue editing it. While the design works great in principle, in practice, I've had times where it only reverted some of the files and it's just messed up the repo state. So I wouldn't really rely on this. Git has been out there for the past 20 or so years now. It is a very reliable piece of software that you can depend on. So I'm pretty sure Cursor will figure this out, but it will just take some time. Another part of a workflow tweak that you can apply is if you don't like having to deal with this many micro commits, you can get away with bigger commits as well. You can leverage the stage changes feature inside of Git where as you make working changes, validated things are good, you can add things to the stage changes. And then so any future edits that they make, it will show up as the on stage changes in this section below. And then once you validated things working, then you can add your new changes on top into the stage changes. Then at the end, create the commit message as a whole, just using the workflow I just showed. That also works quite well, provided you just want bigger commits. I'd always recommend smaller commits because it's easier to track the smaller changes. It's easier to revert. It's just easier to deal with in general. But this could be a aesthetics preference by some people. So. I'm giving you all of the options here. You can see that with AI, it doesn't mean that we throw all of the great software engineering practices outside of window. We should adopt it in this ever-changing AI world to make sure that we work more efficiently together with all of this new tooling available. So if you like this video, I'm sure you'll enjoy my other AI-related workflow videos just up there. Happy shipping, and I'll see you in the next one.